They can save you for the sake of TV. I don't let them save you, but I want you to feel the fiery pits of hell just for a little while. Just feel, ooh, just for a little while. But she didn't. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap of our favorite, favorite Nogon show, The Handmaid's Tale. Season 3, Episode 1, Night. I guess it's called night because we started off at night, but baby, this is called burn, baby, burn. That's basically what this episode is called. Let me tell you, June gets on my damn nerves, y'all. She gets on my dog on nerves. Oh, and this episode didn't make me like her no better. It didn't make me like June, not now. It's better. Hold on for a second. Got my water here. I'm ready to go. I know y'all been waiting on me. I appreciate y'all patience. Y'all know I've been in London the past eight, nine days, one of the two. And it didn't even air in London. It's not airing. It didn't even post in London until today. So my London viewers are just now getting the first three episodes. We're going to have episode two. I'm going to post it tomorrow. Episode three, I will post it on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, when we come back to episode four, we'll be on track. And we'll have them coming week by week after that. My hands seem super dry. Hold on, hold on. Y'all see that big old hunk of ash I had right here on my hand? I had to throw some lotions up on that joint, right? Okay, so we pick up right where we ended season two with June on her way to freedom. Commander Lawrence has helped not only her, but Emily get on that path. And June hands off little jelly bean to Emily and decides to not get her ass in that truck. Y'all already know how I feel about that, how I feel in regards to that, as far as like all the people that had helped her get to that point, in addition to whether or not Emily's safety is a concern for her, getting that baby to safety. But I'm gonna digress for a second. It's not gonna last long, trust me. It's not gonna last long. I'm gonna digress for a moment. Cause she claimed to have reasons. She always got reasons, they say, you know. But then she started running after the truck. And the light started to fade further and further away. And she like, fuck. Almost if she was regretting her decision. Because you didn't think, child. You didn't think at all. And I was like, mm. Then all of a sudden, some headlights roll up on her. She didn't run. She didn't try to hide and take cover. I was like, what the fuck is she doing? You just risk everybody's fucking safety and well-being by not getting your ass on that truck. And now a fucking vehicle approaches and you don't run. You don't go for safety. What the hell is you thinking, girl? Oh, by the grace of God, you know, Commander Lawrence shows up. It was him. <laughs> he stepped out like, have you lost thy mind? What the fuck? Explain. She couldn't explain. It's all she did, standing there looking stupid, you know, with the headlights flashing. He's like, come on, girl, look, we can catch up to them before they make it to the border. Let's roll. <sighs> nope, she ain't going to do that. She not going to do that. She looked at him like, how dare he suggest that I run? Bitch, ain't this what we doing? We run in here. Well, anyway, she said, you know what? Take me to the McKenzie's. They got a daughter. I'm not leaving her without her. And he said, yes, you can. She said, well, I won't leave without her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, okay, at least she thinking about Hannah Banana. Because I told y'all before, that's the only reason why I could see her not getting on that doggone truck. But I still couldn't understand how you would sacrifice one baby's safety over the other. Like, say, you didn't have no guarantees on little Jelly Bean making it to safety. And then on top of it, you don't have any plan on how to get Hannah Banana either. Okay? So, if Commander Lawrence hadn't showed up and agreed to take you, how was you going to get that book? You didn't know where he lived. You didn't know where the Mackenzie's lived. Okay. But this half looks like she's going to she act like she's going to blackmail Commander Lawrence. Like, if you don't take me to the Mackenzie's, you're going to be hanging on the wall because you helped Emily escape. <laughs> I was like, what the really half I am helping you right now? I would have said, fuck her. Fuck you and feed you grits and let her stand right there on that road or kill her myself. That's exactly what I did if I was Commander Lawrence. I'm like, shh child so we go to the waterford house oh poor little tink tink serena joy sitting up there all hurt because she lost her baby finger and her baby mm -hmm. 
So she head into John's water, John Waterford's room. And um, Nick is still sitting outside his door with the gun. Well, actually, it's not his room. They in, 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 in June's room. And Nick is sitting out there with the gun. At first, he didn't want to let her pass, but she brushed on past him anyway. And um, she, he walked, she walked to the room and he like, Waterford, like, hey, call 911. Everybody done lost their damn mind over here, you know? I was like, <laughs> she said, well, wait a minute, give me some time. Get a little bit more time, you know? We need time to allow June to get away. The fuck are you talking about? What you do, woman? I did what's best for my baby. I did what's best for my baby. And some of y'all right now sitting there like, see, Serena Joy is redeemable. You know, she gonna let June get away. The fact that she's still calling that baby hers, the baby that was stolen from a woman that her and her husband raped that she wants to claim as her own. The fact that she's still saying it's her baby says a whole lot for me. Ain't no redemption in Serena Joy for me. Ain't none. Ain't none. I'm like, his dumb ass though, just not catching on. Like, what? You you let her go. You gonna get this whole house in trouble. What the hell is wrong with you? You know, he always out here trying to save face. He always out here trying to save face. But Serena Joy make my ass itch. So, Lawrence, he took June. He took her on down to the Mackenzie's. And um, she's creeping up around the house. First, she looked back like, he ain't going to help me get in. No, nah, he ain't going to help you get in. I, you told me to take you. I took you. So she creeped around the house and she looked in the window and she see Francis. Y'all remember Francis, the, the Martha that brought the baby out there too. She see going in there. She see Francis and um, she tucked behind the, uh, the wall. Now, you know, it was cold outside. She breathed it all heavy on the window. You know how we do when you just make the little pretty pictures when you was a kid drawing your, your window in the car. Your parents gonna give you a spanking for you got all them doggone fingerprints all on the doggone window. June did it on the window. She breathing in the window. And somehow Francis got the keen eagle eye, like, baby. She turned around, she saw that condensation on the window, and she came in like, wait a minute, what the hell is this? You know, she tried to wipe it, <laughs> and did nothing happen, you know. And uh all of a sudden she turned around. Whoo! How the fuck June get in the house? I do not know. But June got in the house. And Francis was like, hey, just be careful, dog. Just be careful. You know, go on do your thing, girl. I was like, how she noticed that breath of conversation? I just don't even know. But she make it up to Hannah Banana's room, right? She's sitting there. And all of a sudden, whoop, 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 whoop. The police. Who called the police? Because at this point, June is not ran anywhere, remember? Don't nobody know that June gone. Remember, who called the police? And why would they be at the McKenzie's house? Make it make sense to me. Y'all can make them make sense to me. If somebody can make that make sense for me down in the comment section, please do. Because they don't make no sense. June took off. She supposedly escaped and ran. Serena said, hey, give her some time to go. So ain't nobody called 911. Why would the police be at the McKenzie's house? They weren't searching for handmaids unless they out there searching for Emily. Because <sighs> if they search for Emily, though, who called the police on Aunt Lydia? Because Commander Lawrence is out there helping Emily escape. So who phoned the popos for Aunt Lydia? But why would they go to the McKenzie's? I don't know, y'all. So anyway, she up there, June heard the police. She goes and she sits next to little Hannah Banana. She caressing the face. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I done woke the fuck up. But as a child, my child, she 21, that motherfucker sleep hard. She sleep hard. <laughs> you could go in there and redress her, put jewelry on the comb of her. She will be asleep. That's how Hannah Banana was. June put her little band on her arm and everything. And uh, what did she do, y'all? She surrendered her. She got down on her knees on the ground and I was like, what is you doing? You risk everybody freaking life for you to escape, for you not to even take the escape route, to take your butt back to Hannah Banana House and when the police show up, you surrender, you didn't run and hide, you didn't even like, try to run away, nothing, just I surrender, I go forth, I go with you. No, no girl, no, no. June's stressing me out. June is stressing me out already. Well, Mrs. McKenzie, she was up. She was up at the crib. She was like, okay, bring it to me. Bring it to me. And she like, look at her. Stop confusing my doggone daughter. You know, you give her nightmares and everything. Last time you saw her, she had nightmares for two weeks. June was like, oh, you, you didn't think I knew about that? You didn't think I knew? I am her mother. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a slap in the face. That's a slap in the face. She's like, look her, I'm going to tell you, the only thing you're going to get from this, if you keep this up, you keep trying to come back here, is death. That's the only thing waiting for you. And you're going to die right there in front of your child on the ground. That's all you're going to have come for you. And so, for some reason, though, they got this bonding moment. June asked her how Hannah Banana was. And she started telling her, you know, how she been over the last six years in captivity. And, um, you know, they bonded for a moment. And she got up in June's face and she looked at it and she said, she got your eyes. You know, praise be. Thank God good. June said, that's because of my mother. <laughs> You know, I guess it was a slap in the face to Miss McKenzie. But it's made it seem like June ain't coming back for Hannah Banana to me. That's what it may seem like to me. You know, because at first, well, you know, she was telling her all the stories and she was thanking her for raising her and being the good household for whatever, whatever, whatever. It looked like June was breaking, like, I came back for all the wrong reasons. Maybe this is the best place for her. And then she was like, after she said that she looked like, you know, had her eyes and June was like, oh, shit, that's right. I am her mama. So I don't know what she fit to do in regards to Hannah Banana because because it ain't making sense to me. It ain't making sense to me at all. Anyway, um, she back at the Waterfords. Why is she not going to the colony? I don't understand. Why is June been given so many choices? Because you got all these freaking guardians continuously picking her up after she tried to escape time and time again. And not one time are they taking her to the colony. She gets to go back home to the Waterfoots. Every single freaking time. She going back home to the Waterfoots, you know. Nick, just look at her with pity. Look what you doing with her. You know, same way I am. I'm looking at her like that too, Nick. And the Waterfoots, you know, they now have come together. They in the same room together. John wants to know where his damn baby at. Where my baby at, woman. You know what I'm saying? So she ignored him. You know, she ignored him like Serena. She's fine. She's safe. She's going to be all right. I think Serena Joy should have whooped her ass. That's what I think. You know what I'm saying? You take my damn baby, then you give her a fuck away. And you don't even know if she's safe or not, even though you sit here promising me these fa this false, you know, falsities. It's falsities. Falsities ain't no real word. But you promising me this shit like my baby really alive or my baby real, really safe. And you can't guarantee me that. Now, Serena say, um, did you give her the off Joseph? I was like, who the fuck is up Joseph? You know, Emily done had so many got doggone last names. Her last name was Lawrence because she was with Commander Lawrence. That was her last one. Like she should have gave so no, I think there had to be an added and error there because she should have been of Lawrence. But anyway, she's like, Did you give her the of Joseph? I did the best to what I could do for our baby. Did you give her the of, jo of Joseph? I, Sabrina, you gotta believe me, I did the best thing for her. I did the best thing for her. You know, they steady ignoring Fred. Fred is looking at this exchange like, what the fuck is going on with them two, right? So she's like, you know, you gave her to a murderer you killed our baby you killed my baby what is it i think she said my because you know serena jones think that baby's hers you killed my baby i did what's best for her serena why 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 because you ripped my baby from my arms and i hope it feels the same way for you as it did for me i was like really june that's the reason that's the reason why you stole it away in the middle of the night and took a little, little, little jelly bean with you. It's so Serena Joy could feel what you feel when they took Hannah Banana away. Please tell me. That's the only reason that you just coming up with right now just, just to make her feel hurt. Just to hurt her feelings. Because Serena broke down. She broke down crying. You know. And I was like, okay, so when June decided to tell Emily to call the baby Nicole, was that her way? of disassociating herself with Holly. She had to say in her mind, this ain't my baby. I feel for the kid. Let's go ahead and get her to safety. If she make it, she make it. If she don't, she don't. She's not my problem. But Hannah is my child. That's the one you ripped from my fucking arms. That's my baby. That's who I'm going back to get. So I'm going to tell you that little jelly bean is safe. I don't really know. I don't really know. Um, But I'm going to tell you that she's safe. But when I told Emily to call her Nicole, I had already separated in my mind that that's no longer my child. That's that's the only reason I, the only way I can explain that's what June is feeling at this point. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. I want you to feel my pain. So I really give no fuck if that baby is safe or not. And I was like, tell me again that June ain't selfish. Tell me. Somebody said again. I can't hear you. I can't. June is selfish as fuck. <laughs> 
but she decides to console her bestie. Don't cry. Don't cry, girl. It's me and you together, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what type of mental fuckery <laughs> is going on here? And I, I, I guess they like, okay, we even. Let's be friends now. We even. You took my baby, I took yours. Now we even. Y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got... I would have choked the life out of June at that point. But nope. She gets to go back to her room. Nick, go on, take her up to the room, y'all. I was like, what the fuck? Why is Commander so chill with Nick? What the heck? You just held me in a room by gunpoint. For, the, for my safety, you say? And then I found out that ain't for my safety. June trying to escape. And now I'm just chill with you. Just go on back to work, dog. Go on, go on, take June back up there. I'm like, come on. Look, look, Nick looking at her though like this bitch right here same way I was feeling Nick same way I was feeling and he say the fuck is wrong with you I'm like tell us somebody tell her that the fuck is wrong with you do you know how many people risk their damn lives to get you out she shrugged him off she shrugged him off I'm like you not gonna even hold no accountability for yourself June you're not going to even drop a tear and say, you know what, my bad, I'm sorry, but I had to do what I had to do. You're not going to do none of that. He appears, hey, what about us? What about the people who helped you get there? And she just shrugged him off like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Baby, Nick say you so fucking selfish. Yes, tell her. Tell her you so fucking Oh, I'm so mad. Tell her, Nick. He said, you ain't never getting out of her. Ever. That's for neat. Boot. And I don't even know if I'm using the right terms, but I think they are. It's your last hoorah right there, baby girl. You gonna die here. You don't think I know that? Well, if you fucking knew that, June, then why'd you let us help you? You had to just set your ass right there and rot it in that fucking case. That's what all you had to do. We didn't have to risk our lives to help your ass get out since you knew you was gonna die. Oh, y'all. He should have added, and I'm gonna let your ass die. That's what he should have added. That bitch say, I know that. So fuck everybody else. I was like, please, 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 please let Rita choke her ass out. Where is Rita at anyway? But please let Rita choke her ass out. Okay. So we out in the woods now with Emily. Got the she got jelly bean in her arm, jelly bean crying every little once in a while, you know what I'm saying? You got the drones and the helicopters flying above. Somebody had to call the police. Why would they be out there looking? Who called the police to say that Aunt Lydia had been stabbed up? For all this police activity to be out there, the last thing we saw, there was a fire across the street from the waterfront. Nobody knew June had went in the doggone world. So what's all this activity? But okay, she out there running. She done made it to the river's edge. How you supposed to cross, girl? How you supposed to cross? You know, I'm like, is she about to sacrifice herself? Put jelly bean in a little wrap and float her on down the river? Girl, don't do that. Don't do that, right? What's the plan here, Emily? What's the plan? So anyway, I know you ain't got one because ain't nobody filled you in on the plan. You didn't even know you was escaping the night. So I know you ain't got no plan. I know you ain't got one because nobody explained it to you. But she said, fuck it, I'm going to get across. She started going through the water. Luckily, it wasn't deep. You know what I'm saying? She walking through. She walking through. She holding that baby tight to her chest. And all of a sudden, the current swept her. I was like, oh, shit. Now, y'all know I can't swim. I had to freak the fuck out. I had been gurgling. I have been gurgling all kind of water. If I was a jelly bean baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'd have been floating down the damn river because I'd have been freaking. I'd have been flailing. Freaking the fuck out. But now, Emily has strong. You know, Emily tough. She held strong. She resurfaced up out that water with that baby still hold tight in her arms. I was like, you go, girl. But Jelly Bean wasn't crying no more. They climbed up on the shore. And she laying on her. She, she, she crying. And it's just like, like, oh, shit. I don't know if we're going to make it. I don't know if we're going to make it. I'm like, CBR. CBR. <laughs> Breathe, breathe in, push on her little lungs, something. Give her CPR, but all of a sudden, Jelly Bean cried a little cry. Woo, the lights. I say, Fabi Dan, she done got caught. Baby, Officer Canada was like, hey, girl, you done made it to the promised land. Hey, girl, hey. She couldn't believe it herself. She couldn't believe I was nervous. I was nervous. Now I need Emily to get up there ass up to, uh, to Canada. Get over her shell shock and rain down on Gilead with some fury. Come back with the troops and kill them all, girl. 
peel them off. I'm just saying. That's how I'm, I'm just saying. Anyway, they keep showing us Serena Joy with her little nub. Mm -hmm. Trying to make us feel some empathy towards her and not me. Cry me a river, girl. Cry me a sea. Cry all the tears from heaven, but you get no sympathy from me. Not at all. Mm -mm. So, this is the story they're going to spin. You know, Fred always got to come up with a, a story to save face. Aunt Lydia was attacked by Emily, or of Joseph is what they say. She's a student of Lawrence. Um, oh, is he Lawrence Joseph? I thought he was Commander Lawrence. He was Commander Joseph Lawrence. Oh, it's right. It's their first name. And why do I keep calling Fred John? Oh, my God. Forgive me. Y'all knew Waterford name is fucking Fred. Why was I calling him John? Do I know a John Waterford? I think I do know a John Waterford. That's why she of Joseph. Because Joseph is Lawrence's first name. Who my brain ain't working right, y'all. I still got jet lag. But anyway, okay. <laughs> the story is Emily of Joseph attacked Aunt Lydia. Right, right? And uh, y'all noticed he didn't say kill, attack. So our lady got to be somewhere still the right way. Okay. So she kidnapped the baby, took off and ran. And Serena Joy and a friend together went after her. Like any good mama would do. United we stay. I was like, what the fuck? Right? So they're going to keep it tight-lipped about June showing up at the McKenzie's. That's basically what's really going to go on. So Serena Joy is like, you know, he, can, he got to spin this story, you know, to keep... You know, Serena Joy off the wall. She's like, I don't need your protection. I don't want your help. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to protect me. He said, I'm trying to protect this house. <laughs> it's his God given right, Serena. He said, This is God given right to protect a woman, protect you and that house. You know what I'm saying? Don't be blocking his blessings. Don't do that. Don't block his blessings. So I'm still asking, Where is Rita? Why have we not seen the reaction of Rita seeing June come back into the house? I need to see that. Okay, so anywho, Serena Joy putting the antiseptic on her little nub. And since she started pouring it on to something, I thought that she was finna start taking it herself like she was finna kill herself, you know. And um, then I heard some screams or some, yeah, it, it sounded like screams to me. And smoke was filling the hallway. June walking down the hallway and seeing all the smoke pillowing through the air. You know what I'm saying? So she slowly started to creep upstairs. You know, she touching the smoke with her hands. It's just, it just billowing right there. Just like, look up to the sky. And there's all the smoke just curling around, wafting through the air, right? And she goes into the room. Baby child, Serena done set that bed on fire. <laughs> there will be no more going back to normal for you, Fred Waterford. No nookie from the handmaid to get some cookies. That ain't what's going to happen with you, boy. I was like, throw yourself on it. Throw yourself on that bed. Lie in the bed of fire that you made, Serena Joy, girl. Throw yourself on it. They can save you for the sake of TV. I don't let them save you, but I want you to feel the fiery pits of hell just for a little while. Just feel, ooh, just for a little while. But she didn't do it. Why? Because her good best friend, June, came on in to the rescue. Like, Serena, come now. Come here, though. Let me save you one more time, Serena Joy. You know. Oh, and they scramble downstairs and Rita come out like, hey, what's going on? That's her only good scene for her to say, what's come on? She, she didn't get to see her interaction with June at all. Um, You know, if they make it outside, June was still in the house, caressing the walls, feeling the temperature rise in the wallpaper, watching the ceiling start to crumble and turn to ash. You know, the, the 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 whole structure of the house is starting to shake from the top because the roof in a big ass old house, I used to love the big ass old house, it's just shaking everything. And the stuff starting to crumble down because that whole room is on fire. So you see the hand railing shaking in the hallway. And June is just there, just sold it all in, sold it all in. She slowly went her way to the door, turn around, and said, Burn, motherfucker, burn. <laughs> You ain't got no house to protect no more. Not do you, Fred. Ain't got no house to protect no more. Well, up in Canada, Emily is being greeted by the medical staff. And everybody applauding and clapping and looking at her. Come on in. I guess they ain't never seen the handmaid before. And damn sure not one with a baby. You know what I'm saying? Back at the crib, June is being carted away. I guess back up to the Red Center. You know, um, 
Fred, Rita, and Nick, they all together. And Nick turned around and tell her, you know, good luck to you. Be safe out there. She turned around and said, same to you. He probably think that she set the fire. You know, came back to the house and started the fire. That's probably what Nick is assuming. I would assume that too. Um, because that'll be the only reason why I could see them cart her away and take her back to the Red Center. Um, but since Fred had said that, you know, she wasn't involved with the baby missing, I guess that's why she ain't went to the college. June should be at the fucking college. Give up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So we back at the Red Center. Who's in charge of the girls? Who's in charge of the girls? Well, right now we got Aunt Louise who seem to be making demands and everything. Um, and June is being taken in to get her little part of the punishment. She got to do penance. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, they took them straps and beat the shit out of her feet. Her feet was told the hell up. And I was sitting there like, you know, I'm, I'm, I know usually I usually feel some pain for June. Usually I feel something for June. I just can't, y'all. I just can't. I don't know. I don't know. But another hand may come in while June is down there scrubbing the floors. You know, Aunt Louise made all the rest of her handmaids come in out the field and track all their dirt over the freshly clean floors that June just cleaned and so she can clean that shit up again. And the other handmaid come switch out the, the, bu the buckets, you know, some clean water. And she kneels down and tell her, hey, Emily and Jelly Bean made it. They made it to Canada. They safe. And I'm like, at least this gives her some sense of relief. Because she, she looked a little defeated. But she heard that and she was like, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. You know? Um, and then our Louise come and get her. And she's carted off to a new home. And I was surprised, like I said, because the Waterfords was supposed to be her last chance. Remember? Her last chance. But she carted off to a new home. I guess Commander Lawrence got the juice. Because that's where she ended up. <laughs> He's like, you ain't going to be no trouble now, are you? No, sir, I'm not. <laughs> that basically meant the hell I ain't. She, the hell I ain't. Y'all, this is the first episode of The Handmaid's Tale. We waited so long for this to come back. Um, This was a pretty good episode. This is a pretty good episode. I would love to have seen... <sighs> Nick basically was the one who was who gave me the realest... Gave me the realest... Um, as far as seeing June back in that guy talk on house, Serena Joy when she you no know, went at her by the neck, she 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 eased off and felt too much compassion for her at that point. The fact that uh, Mackenzie, this is the second time that June showed up, you know, around your motherfucking kid. Y'all ain't reporting that shit. Why is June being afforded so much leniency? I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Um. We still don't know the, the what's going on with Aunt Lady. We still don't know. We just don't. She's been attacked. I know Serena Joy is calling her a murderer, but, you know, Emily done did some shit before. So, you know, that could be why she's laying with her murderer in the beginning. Um, the fact that Rita ain't had no, no type of uh, reaction that we was able to see with June, it just upsets me. I, I just, I wasn't here for that. Um, and Commander Long, Commander, not not Commander, Commander Waterford, just stupid as fuck. Like, you, you just dumb. Just dumb, y'all. So, I'm excited for episode two. We will not, you, you will not get that into tomorrow. I'm not gonna watch it until tomorrow. Y'all know I can't watch Handmaid's Tale back to back like that. Actually, I could watch after this one. This episode wasn't so heavy that I couldn't watch it back to back, but I'm not. You gonna get that tomorrow. So, thank y'all for coming back. I appreciate you being here. Like, the video if you're so inclined to do so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that way you can know when all these videos come out hit the notification bell y'all know since the last time we was here the notification bell system changed so hit the notification bell and turn on all so we can get all the notifications because everybody's been asking me when i'm coming back with these videos when i come back with these videos i made 20 different posts five different videos and two live streams explaining when these was coming back but people were still asking me so if y'all subscribe to the channel with y'all notification bell turned on y'all will know when every video is coming out y'all get all the notices about them in each this and the third and uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. All right. Peace.